Hello, hello, everybody. It's 2.44 p.m. Central Time on the 29th of July, 2021. It's Thursday here in the United States. Hope you're doing well. We are here on the Earthquake 3D live stream. And, of course, we were up all night. If you're not aware of what was going on last night into this morning, you can see it here rolling by on the screen right now. 8.2 earthquake struck which led me to stay up till about 7.38 a.m. Central Time. Man, I'll tell you what, burning the midnight oil into the morning, but we're here now to talk about the after effects on this quake and what to look for over the next several days. So I'll get a display capture turned on. Let me welcome in everybody who's new. If you're new and you don't know what you're looking at, we're looking at Earthquake 3D, the program. It's a program I don't get anything for recommending, but I recommend that you use it. It uses the USGS, EMSC out of Europe, combined feeds, and we're looking at about 48 hours worth of earthquakes right here. The earthquakes that are raised high off the globe are deep down into the earth. And the deeper the earthquakes and the more deep earthquakes there are, we pay attention to those because there tends to be a spread of shallower, larger earthquakes. Depending on how many of these deep earthquakes there are, and how wide of an area that's affected by the deep quakes. One more thing before we get going, what I think's going on. Whoops. Hold on. Press the wrong dang button. Oh, that's the way it goes when you're live. One thing we know about the deep earthquakes is they're happening down below the plates. Now, what I think is happening down below the plates, concentric waves focusing in on each other coming up out of the core of the earth up through the magma, the mantle, and then hammering into the underside of the plate. The combined force of hundreds if not thousands of miles of VLF, very low frequency, or beyond, even lower, but focusing in can't compress down into the magma and shoots up into the underside of the plate. When that happens, a standing wave starts to happen, so imagine it like this. A deep earthquake down here at this end of the tank starts to put pressure, or put the wave, into the tank, and the more deep earthquakes there are, the more energy that gets pumped into the tank. Now, when the wave reaches the end of the tank, it reflects back and starts to pump the energy even more back into the waves, and it forms what's called a standing wave. And you get the same sized earthquakes spreading out across a vast distance, and that's what I think is happening over in Mother Nature's wave tank, which is the plate boundary system around the entire planet. So these are the wave tanks. And the hammering action is spreading the waves out, and then they focus in on certain areas. We get a big amount of movement on one side of the plate. We see a big amount of movement compensate on the other side of the plate. And it happens regularly, not on this size. We're dealing with 8.2, which is the largest earthquake in several years' time. So the last big 8 was an 8.2 that happened right down here next to Fiji. It was a deep earthquake a few years back. Here we are now, 8.2 striking somewhat shallow on the plate boundary up here on the north side of the Pacific. So you can see where the cluster is and you can see how big of an area which is moving now compared to last night, just the single quake. But it's like a stepping stone path or a trail of quakes going up onto the actual peninsula and mainland of Alaska at this point. So it's continuing moving. The more this moves, the more activity that stays here, right where the big earthquake is, means the energy or the wave is still trapped there. It's trapped where? On the red line, the plate boundary, that makes a steep bend and goes down into the United States. So this means there's going to be a release from up here that goes down and across. That big wave, that standing wave, is currently caught up in Alaska, dropping off the eight along the way, and it should go over into the Craton, the North American Craton. Now that gets into what to look for in the United States, which I've already issued warnings in my video last night, but I'll go ahead and recap on the warnings now for the United States. First of all, we had a warning going for a watch for a large earthquake to strike here on the north side of Vancouver Island, Haida Gwaii, Hecate Strait. We're going to cancel that warning. This is the earthquake we were looking for. The spot where it struck, again, we warned right here, and the earthquake struck right here on the other side of the bell curve. 
Now, I've always been on the other side of the bell curve. My whole life, apparently. Little joke there. Okay, so we're going to cancel the warning there. And that's because the earthquake that we're looking for, the big quake, has struck just on the other side of the plate boundary. This means a new flow is going to be coming in from the northwest, which a few things are going to happen. We're going to see an increase in the number of tremors from Vancouver and Washington and Oregon and Northern California. Tremors are vibrations as the plate starts to shift. So let's go open the tremor map really quick and just take a quick look and show it to you. Here's the tremor map. There's 125 on here right now from yesterday on the 28th. We can expect an increase. This shouldn't go quiet, and if it does, they're turning it off. Okay, this is going to light up with a whole bunch of tremors as the plate starts to shift as a result of the incoming wave. The people up here who run this, big jokers up at the University of Washington, and I mean like next level goofball manipulation of the data. Okay, so we, we kind of have to take this with a grain of salt, these tremors that they're showing to us, because they turn off the system whenever anything significant happens. Only when they say something's going on, do they leave it on to show the tremors, okay? That's how bad it is. It's just, they, they just willy-nilly whenever they want. It doesn't matter. It's not even science up there at University of Washington. It's all about politics and feelings. Okay, so, and feelings and science, man, I'll tell you what. That's a bad combo. Okay, now we're going to watch down here in California. Right in between our sets of quakes, you see how there's three earthquakes coming in off the south side of the Juan de Fuca fracture zone. One right at the pinnacle tip. This is the Gorda Escarpment that goes down into the San Andreas, the thick red line. Now I'm going to have to warn from Eureka, which is right here basically, 200 miles all the way down to Monterey Bay. So from Eureka to Monterey Bay. But what's the middle point between Eureka and Monterey Bay? Well, you see it. Napa Valley, North Bay area. I'm warning for a six. Should happen this week, and the reason is the inundating wave should come in, go around the bend of the plate, start coming in from the Pacific Northwest. We should see also an increase near 5.0. Go over to Idaho Yellowstone. So Idaho Yellowstone here. Idaho, obviously, marked on the map. Yellowstone right next to it at the border with Wyoming. Let's go over and show it to you on the, US, or on the USGS earthquake feed. And we have a bunch of earthquakes there right now over the past day and a half. Small. Look at the size. 1.8, 1.9, and a 2. Now, the trajectory on these quakes goes in a diagonal line out of Montana, and it goes right down into the park, Yellowstone National Park. The other cluster is over the deepest part of the magma chamber for Yellowstone in Idaho. Yellowstone's magma chamber, the feeder for it, comes from below Oregon goes up below Idaho, comes up to the surface up here at Wyoming. So it's huge. It's 11 Grand Canyons in size, the magma chamber for Yellowstone. It goes down at an angle of 30 kilometers, and the feeder for it comes from over here. So we are really above the deepest part of the center of the magma chamber where this cluster of quakes is in Idaho. Both Idaho and Yellowstone Park should see a major increase in the number of earthquakes and the size. I would put the bigger of the quakes striking in Idaho, right next to the park, and it could go up into the five range. So California, six, right along the coast, Bay Area, 5.0 up by Idaho going to Yellowstone. That's just two. We go over here, we get down to Texas, I'd look for 4.9, somewhere in the upper four range. We are already dealing with 4.3s at the pumping operations in West Texas. So West Texas, Southwest Texas, watch out could go up to near 5. Same with up here in Oklahoma, could go to near 5. So really, we're dealing with one, two, three spots across the edge of the North American Craton from Yellowstone down to Texas back to Oklahoma. All three should see some significant sized movement as the wave goes across the plate. New Madrid Seismic Zone, where I live here. Look, I'm going to warn actually everybody from St. Louis. I live west of St. Louis. I never have to warn St. Louis. We're going to warn south of St. Louis. All the way down to the New Madrid seismic zone, right in the middle, New Madrid right down here. Swarming, and it too could go up into the four range. We hardly ever get fours on the New Madrid. Anytime a four strikes, everybody starts to pay attention. It's just a flow going across the plate. That's what we want to see, actually. We want to see, like, fours going across the plate. 
at the same time as six strikes over on the West Coast. We want to see this flow go across. East Coast is going to get hit. Now we look between our previous sets of earthquakes on the East Coast to find our current warned areas. But I can already tell you, you don't see it up here to the north, do you? So we have to go back several days to get the last quake up in Ontario and Quebec, which puts Pennsylvania, New York, Delaware, and New Jersey right in the mix, and it should go into the three range. So it should be sixes, fives, fours, threes across the plate going in the next several days. Okay, get ready for it, right? Now that's not all that's going on. That's just the push that's coming across from the wave that's, of course, developed across the West Pacific. The West Pacific wave from all of our deep earthquakes. And that's spreading down to New Zealand and spreading all the way out over to Solomon Islands like a giant arrow in its own right. Well, an offside, and the number seven, if you will. Uh, so we're looking over to the west, and there's a big open area across Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands. No earthquake activity in 48 hours. That's a little odd. Let's go look at the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center and see if any volcanoes are erupting over there. Dukono in Indonesia, Sabancaya in Peru, Reventador in Ecuador and South America, Nevados de Chilean in Chile and South America, Dukono in Indonesia, Suanizajima in Japan. Sabangaya again, Reventador, Nevado del Ruiz Volcano, and then we have several others that are just repeats. The only one that I'm really paying attention to now is Mount Cinnabung, which is doing 13, 14, and 15,000 foot eye blast after yesterday's 20,000 foot eye blast over at Mount Cinnabung in the West Pacific of Indonesia. Let's see, Ebico in the Kuril Islands, and... That really looks like it. Karimsky is also on the list, technically, from yesterday. Shivalush, oh wait, hold on. Shivalush is also on the list from yesterday. Let's go and show you where those all are. That, this matters, actually. So, up here all the way to the north, we have Mount Ebico right here. We have Shivalush right here. And we have Karimsky right here. That's three volcanoes that were not all three together on the list. Now all three together on the list, right next to the area that broke. Look at this. We are swarming out at Great Sitkin, right in the middle of the Aleutian Island chain. I think that's Great Sitkin. Let's go take a look and just find out, but I'm pretty sure it is. Let's see. Sitkin Island, or is it Atka? Well, you know what? There's a way to find out. We can actually get the coordinates and put them in. That'll make it a little easier than trying to guess. ADAC. Okay, ADAC. Sorry. Okay, now I said Sitkin. It's, it's ADAC. ADAC, Alaska. That's where the X-Band radar ship is based out of. Here's ATCA, by the way. Here's ADAC. Do you guys know about the big domed X-Band radar ship? <laughs> no? Ah, oh, never mind. That's eh, no biggie. There's Sitkin right here. So, Atka, Sitkin, Adak. Swarming out there. Now, we have not seen those on the list. We, again, we are seeing swarms at these volcanoes right next to it now, which is a change from where we were from just a couple days ago. So, swarm here and swarm here. Something's getting ready to happen, volcanically speaking. But we know this. The wave is still trapped up here in the north. We'll know when it escapes out to the United States with the dramatic increase in the magnitudes and the number of earthquakes in the U.S. The number of earthquakes is called the frequency. We will see a frequency increase. Again, the number of earthquakes is going to increase. So everywhere where you see stacks like this, they're going to be going up off the screen like the one in California. Right now, it's actually low, the number of earthquakes. So that's going to go up. Now, I just turned on 24 hours worth of quakes. This is just 24, and it's 0, 0.0 and greater. The reason we do this is to see the areas that are currently moving, so we can try to find the areas that are moving next. Now, you should be able to make this out. Uh, kids play a game called Connect the Dots. You remember how to play that? You connect the dots, and we can connect the dots from point to point in a general trajectory going northwest to southeast. This is a common theme that I'm getting ready to repeat here. Northwest to southeast in a line. See that? Going across Washington over to Idaho. But also look at Montana. Montana going down into Yellowstone. 
This is just 24 hours of quakes, but it too is going in a diagonal line, northwest to southeast. Now we get over here along the coast of California, and of course, San Andreas. Earthquakes are mimicking that, going northwest to southeast along the coast. But look in close, along the California-Nevada border, same thing. Earthquakes are going northwest to southeast along the California-Nevada border. We get down here to Owens Valley, and earthquakes are going northwest to southeast. We get down to Southern California, earthquakes are going northwest to southeast. All in a trajectory, all across the west coast. There's only one spot where it's not, and that's right here across Utah. Look at it. It's making like an arrow shape on the south point coming out of Utah, coming out of Nevada, going over to Utah. Now, we see this happen where earthquakes will go across Utah in an arrow shape that points over to the east. That's why I've got an arrow there. The energy transfers from the California-Nevada border and goes across into the edge of the craton, then goes down to Texas. And we tend to get the same sized earthquakes coming out of California and go down to Texas. It's not that big of a drop down magnitude wise. So we go from fours down to threes, or in this case, we go from upper fours down to lower fours as we go across the plate. So this diagonal line of quake thing signifies a couple things. It shows that energy is coming in from the northwest and it's traveling across the plate going to the east southeast. That's pretty much a given, right? Wait a second. Hold on. Do I have the right feed turned on? I have one day feed turned on. Let's hit apply again. What the heck? Okay, all of a sudden, they just updated the quakes, and a whole bunch of new earthquakes just appeared on the feed here just in the past few minutes. A new swarm... Oh, man. Okay. A new swarm has just broken out, marked in white, in Yellowstone. Let's get the time on this, on these. 14.54. In the last five hours? 15.32... 1454, 15. So we're talking four or five hours ago. Wow. Why are those all just popping on? Okay. For whatever reason, several earthquakes just popped on there. This is the past few hours. Here's the whole day. So in the past few hours, several earthquakes have struck and started to swarm out at Yellowstone. Interesting. Now we go over along the West Coast and we don't have anything to report to you out of Oregon. No earthquakes. But there is one right at the border. Let's go look at the border, shall we? What's going on? Oh, oh, well, hey, 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 no biggie. We don't even need to look it up, do we? I mean, it's an explosion. You can just ignore it. Hey, what would you do if I told you that the only place where explosions are reported are Oregon? And then everywhere else, it doesn't have explosions. We get quarry blasts down in Southern California, down in the Mojave. But those are the only places in the whole country where there's a quarry blast or an explosion. Did you know that? And it happens regularly. Let's go take a look and see what's here. Looks like, hey, hey, you know, nothing like blowing up the boat lot. You know, what happened here? I, I can already tell you I know what happened. Bubba got out here with his boat, and he was going to be doing some fishing, but he forgot his fishing pole. And he had already driven out there and put the boat in the water. And he remembered in the container inside one of his boats, he had some M80s. Now, this is what we do here in the United States. When you need fish and you don't have a fishing pole, you take a firework, you light it, and you drop it in the water, and it goes boom! And then all the fish are basically depth charged like submarines in World War II, and they get crushed from the blast in the water, and up float the fish. And then you take them, and you take them and you put, since you forgot your pole, but you likely have a hook and a line, you take the fish, and you put them on the line, and you say you caught it. And we call that redneck fishing. And I can call it that because I'm from Missouri. But I'm going to have to say an earthquake, or an explosion right next to a dam probably isn't the best thing. And maybe this dam might be compromised by any kind of explosion activity that's going on right next to it. Just a thought. So, what else is here? Is there anything else here of any significance at Umatilla? Well, I would like to look in and see. Looks like we got a huge electrical something or other out here. I don't know what's going on there, but whatever it is, this looks like it's a big deal. What do you make of that? I don't know. I'd have to go look it up and see what this facility is. 
to try and find out. It could be a manufacturing facility of some kind, could be a quarry of some kind. Let's see. Somebody ringing our doorbell? I think somebody's here. Somebody's here at the house. Well, that's weird, because we're in a closed, gated community. Okay. Oh. I guess the wife is going to be peeking outside, because I'm in the middle of an update. <clears throat> okay, uh, let, let's carry on, shall we? So we have huge, high-voltage power lines coming in here. I'm not getting any place marks for what this place is called. Let's just get, try and see if we've got some info on this place. Because again, anytime I see big voltage of any kind, high voltage, look at the amount of electrical that's here. We got major electrical here. Makes me wonder, why would an earthquake be listed as an explosion next to a dam when it's really an earthquake? Oh man, I love mysteries, and that's a true mystery to me. So, marked as an explosion, anything new? No. Let's go over to the west. We have an earthquake right at Mount St. Helens. Now, they're not going to list an earthquake at St. Helens as an explosion, are they? Well, that would cause a panic. It would make people look. So, it's an earthquake up there instead of an explosion. Now, this trajectory of earthquakes that some get listed as explosions is really a sign of the plate really getting ready to move or already moving. Explosion, please. An explosion down in the plate, maybe. Maybe methane down in the plate exploding. But... Certainly not an explosion from humans. That's not correct. So the plate shifting up here across the Pacific Northwest and explosions start to show up all of a sudden when the plate starts shifting. And I personally think they're doing that to hide the earthquakes to pad the numbers. You know, change the regular earthquakes to be explosions in Oregon so that it looks like Oregon's always quiet. So people invest in Oregon and people go and buy property and spend money and tourists and all that. Okay, now, down into California we go. Diagonal line of quakes, starting at a volcano up here, where this big stack of earthquakes is. It's a place called Geysers, California, Geyserville. You know, well, actually, it's listed as Anderson Springs. Yeah, well, depending on which quake we click on, it's going to say either Geyserville or Anderson. So there's the geysers, and the geysers tells us what's there. Old geothermal features, which humans now have to pump water down into to get steam. And they use the water to turn turbines. So let's just show you here. There we are. Right on the hillsides, right next to us, we've got a boatload of turbines set all across the landscape. And the pipelines go to drill points where they pump in sewage. Human sewage gets pumped into the ground. The nasties get left down in the ground. The steam comes up and turns the turbine. We are on the edge of Clear Lake Volcanic Field. Feel free to pause it and read it if you need to, if you don't know about Clear Lake, but it gets hit regularly with swarms of quakes as energy is coming in down the San Andreas. Let's go over to the USGS map here. Hold on. Turn back on USGS. San Andreas is a thick red line here, and earthquakes travel down the San Andreas as these waves spread down the San Andreas, these seismic waves, if you will. The VLF, very low frequency of some kind, vibrating down the San Andreas, and it drops off equal spaced quakes all the way along the way. Then the halfway points are filled in, and that's what we're looking for in the next several days. Bay Area, keep watch. Now, over to the east, last week's 6.0 earthquake location is still swarming now, and it's going to break again. We, Like I said, we have a big push coming in from the north, it's going to go down along the coast, strike down here next to the Bay Area. Pretty much parallel to it, well, diagonally parallel, but right across California. Over at Lake Tahoe, down to Long Valley Caldera, we're swarming. We're swarming with a lot of earthquakes. At this point, though, I have to go check the hot spots. These are the orange and red dots that you'll see here on the screen. I'm going to turn off everything else, and we're just going to turn on the hot spots. So, active fire mapping program place marks. There we go. Yesterday's hotspots are marked in orange. The weather satellite is picking up all of these and filtering out most of them. It doesn't know what to make of the hotspots. There are fires that it's designed to pick up, and then there's these. Now, these shift and move around. We'll see them go all the way across the plate. Now, you should be able to tell. 
We got a lot of them over on the West Coast from yesterday. A whole shield of them, if you will, going from Washington all the way down through Oregon, down across all of Northern California, South and Central California on both sides of the valley. These hotspots are electromagnetic signatures that come up out of the pleat that are happening somewhere between the ground and space up in the ionosphere. And the weather satellite way up there looking down sees these and filters them out. Says, well, these aren't fires, but what are they? So they're electromagnetic bursts or hotspots that happen as the plate is under stress. Rock under stress, especially huge plates, produces massive amounts of electricity. And the plates act like semiconductors. You guys can go read the studies I posted on my YouTube community page on that if you want to read up on that. Yeah, even new findings as of May this year. That's where the article came out this in May. Uh, uh, electrical signals uh, generated by rock under stress. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, that's where they talk about it being some kind of semiconductor. We already knew that. Electricity flowing through the plate. We already knew that. It's also where storms are following. Tornadoes especially. Now, all of these red, red dots are the new current hotspots that the satellite's picking up. And look. Look at the difference between yesterday, where they all were, and where they are today. Do you notice anything? Well, they're going, the red dots are going down around through Texas, back up to Oklahoma, then sticking on the south side of the Craton Edge, all the way around it, going up the east coast, all the way up into Maine. You see that? Going up into Maine, going on the east coast, following the Craton guys. On the outside edge, the deformed edge of the Craton has a bunch of hot spots across it right now. And yesterday, they were coming in from the west coast. So there's an electromagnetic transfer that's taking place along the Craton. No duh, the earthquakes are also taking that path perfectly down through Texas, back up across Oklahoma. And if we look at the full week, I already showed it to you, the earthquakes going up the east coast of the U.S. So that's our generalized update for the United States. Again, California is going to be watching for 6.0 activity to come into the Bay Area. We're going to be watching for fives or very close to it for Idaho, Yellowstone, for Texas, and for Oklahoma. In between those, there should also be 4.0 range activity. Colorado, Utah, and over on the East Coast, we should see near four or three-ish. Three-ish up by New York, New Jersey, over on the east edge of the Craton. The whole plate's going to move. People in Southern California asking me to what to watch for. Look, guys, first we're going to look for a six up in the Bay Area. Very close after that, but I, I can't issue a double-sided warning that goes out beyond the first warning. Like, we have to wait for the first quake to hit before I can issue a second warning down in Southern California. So I'm waiting to see if I'm correct on this. Should strike as the energy is coming in off the Juan de Fuca. Also, if I'm correct on this, we, we won't see it because they're so freaking butthurt about it. But over at the PNSN, the people who tried to get my fundraiser shut down, uh, their director did. So here, we will have to wait and see if they're feeling like reporting tremors. There should be an increase as the plate starts to shift. But they don't want you to see a relation between the plate shifting and earthquakes because they said there was no relation. I asked him for proof on that, by the way. I did. I asked the guy, the, the director, who was attacking me from the BNSN. I said, you got proof of that? And he said, no, 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 no. It's up to you to prove that there is a relation. I said, well, wait. You're making a claim there is no relation. You, you surely can back that up with something. <laughs> no, no, no. It's on you to prove there is something. I'm like, dude, you're speaking definitively about things. That <laughs> All right. Recapping. Big earthquake struck. Was up all night, 7 a.m. this morning, 7.30 a.m. Central Time. I'm finally going to sleep. We're going to turn on our seven-day feed, just show you what we've been dealing with over the last week, what led up to this. All the deep earthquakes. My viewers, longtime viewers, already knew to look for this. Look for big earthquake activity. Maybe not an eight, but uh, upper sevens maybe. We were all kind of looking for with all the deep earthquake activity from Mexico to Italy. Three quarters of the planet with deep earthquakes down below it. It's going to result in a big earthquake in between all the deep quakes. Halfway point between Mexico and Italy, if you go around the Pacific, pretty much puts us in the North Pacific. Again, from Mexico to Italy and going down and around the bends of the plate. Or I'm sorry, not, not from Mexico. From Chile through Mexico, back up across, over and around to Italy. That is the halfway point going back around the plate boundaries. 
So the halfway point between all the deep quakes planet-wide was hit by an aid. Determining that halfway point takes a look at the whole planet with the earthquakes raised high off the globe. And then we find our halfway point between Chile and Italy. Talk about wild. Think about the size wave it would take to do that. Imagine a wave that goes from Chile to Italy back across the Pacific and this being the middle point of the wave. How long of a wave is that? It's a 10,000 mile, more than that, 20,000 mile long wave where the peak is coming up in Alaska. Something very low. Maybe, maybe even a new kind of wave that we don't even know about yet. Maybe we should call it like, like XLF or something. Bright or, or I don't know, QLF. Quake LF. Yes, yeah. Quake LF. QLF. It's like a new kind of wave, though. I mean, not new, it's always been there, but one we've just discovered that's like VLF, but it's physical, not radio wave. It's electrical induced, not seismically induced. It induces earthquakes, it causes earthquakes. It's not that the QLF wave, the quake, <laughs> quake low frequency, is a separate wave from other radio waves, but it's somehow causing earthquakes. Maybe it's just due to force itself. Now, I was going to get a forecast out for the rest of the planet. That would probably take another hour. I guess I could do that. Let's do it. Well, not really. It won't take an hour. Let's blaze through it. So, let's warn right now. Today is the last day of the warning for Christ Church. And instead, the earthquake we are looking for struck far, far south. I'll put one day additional, 24 hours additional, on the warning. For Christ Church. It expires tonight at midnight, tomorrow night at midnight. And once we get beyond that, it'll either be a miss or whatever. But I'm thinking this is the halfway. Oh, not thinking. You can see it. This is the halfway point. Christ Church is the halfway point between our 5.4 down south and our 5 point whatever up north. So watch out, Christ Church, last day. Over to the west we go, and we have our big open silent zone with no eruptions and no earthquake activity. While on the other side of the Pacific, we're really rocking and rolling. I'm going to watch in Papua New Guinea for 6.2 to 6.3. One magnitude above what's on both sides. We have deep earthquakes on both sides. Here, Fiji, and here over at Indonesia. And that means something larger than the fives and one magnitude larger fits the bill for this amount of deep earthquake activity that we've got right now. I might even be underballing it. It could be bigger. Over to the west we go, and this is the earthquake activity from last night and this morning. Two fives, a 5.5 up at Myanmar, going down around the bend of the plate over to the five in Indonesia. The halfway point between the two has a small earthquake at it. The halfway point if we go around the bends of the plate again, guys, come on. And right here, Mount Sinabung, S-I-N-A-B-U-N-G. People think I'm saying Cinnabon all the time, that there's a place that serves cinnamon rolls here in the United States called Cinnabon. Everybody loves it. Well, okay, there we go. So we're at Cinnabung with multiple blasts at the halfway point. Earthquake activity is going to break out at the halfway point. Should stand to be about the same size as what's going to be striking over at Papua New Guinea in the six-ish range. And I would put it at low end six because the energy is on the other side of the plate and going to be flowing over to the United States. And our deep earthquakes aren't progressing pretty much right now, at least, are not progressing beyond. So over here to the west should be in the six. As we go further to the west, you see a halfway point between the 4.3 at Afghanistan and the 5.5 at Myanmar. We go down, over, up, and around. Halfway point, Nepal. Nepal's going to get hit by something then what's larger than on both sides. We have a 5.5 on one side and a 4.3 on the other. Take them, add them together, it equals 5.543. So 5.6 is due in the middle. As we go further to the west, Iran. Now, first of all, no earthquakes in Iran in like two days? What? Going down across the boundary of the plate boundary on the south side of Iran between this 4.3 and this 4.0. Going down and around, halfway point. Halfway point is going to be struck by something larger than what's on both sides. We have an incoming wave equal to 5.5. That means 5.5 to 5.6 also in Iran. 
So Nepal and Iran should both be getting hit by near mid-range fives. Two mid-range fives mean a near six over in Greece. Greece, where all the rings overlap in the middle of the Aegean Sea. Well, let's just go ahead and warn Greece and Turkey since they both kind of are right here. And a six strikes, you're going to feel it on both sides of the Aegean Sea. Right where all the rings overlap in the middle of the Aegean Sea. New six incoming next several days. The fives are already on their way like a check in the mail. Or like a river that's already had a, a flood on it or a, a huge rainstorm. And the flood is starting. Now, once we get beyond Iran, we're across Turkey. All these fours and threes, it looks like a hot jumbled mess. Now, we go down where all the rings overlap in Central Europe. This puts us into Bosnia and Croatia again. Bosnia, Croatia. Let's just go ahead and warn you now. Five. Five is incoming, very close to it, in the next couple days. Italy, you swarmed out this past week. We got fours on your east side of the Adriatic, and we had activity go up and around through Scotland and go up even all the way to the North Pole. You can see that here now. Multiple earthquakes marked from Iceland. X marks the spot hit. North Pole, X marks the spot hit. 4.8 at the North Pole, 5.0 at Iceland. And again, directly at the X's. We were expecting that. So you can check off both Iceland and the North Pole, who we warned this past week when near 5.0 activity was striking. 4.8 actually struck down here at Croatia. 4.8 struck there, and then all of a sudden we get a 4.8 at the North Pole. Gee, it's like there's a transfer or something. Uh, again, a near 5 down here to the south and a near 5 up at Iceland too. Come on. It's a perfect transfer across Europe going around the outside edge. Romania got hit. 3.0, and uh, Scotland, I already mentioned. I mentioned I had warned Scotland for this week. And I hardly ever warn Scotland. Maybe once every three to four months we have to warn Scotland. And it got hit. Scotland did get hit. Spreading across from Fiji, where all of our deep earthquakes are, we go across and you see there's a 5.3. Now the 5.3, if we look really close, it's on this lightning bolt-shaped fracture zone that goes up to the north and down to the south. Let's go over to the USGS map here and show it to you here. There it is. So the lightning bolt or stair step shape is the plate boundary fracture zone. You see which way it goes. It goes up and then connects over to the east, doesn't it? I want you to think of this like a train coming across a bridge from over here where it originated. And it's coming across a bridge and the bridge is vibrating right now. Now it's reached a turning point where it's going to go to the north. It's coming across this way, and it's directing up to the north. That means north side, under pressure, going to receive an incoming blast like a train that's coming off a bridge and hitting a mountain. Now, the train is going to hit the mountain, and physics, physics is going to take over, and the train will try to go around the mountain physically. Instead of going through it, or first try to plow into the mountain. But of course, so who's going to win, the mountain or the train? The train's going to bounce off the mountain and go around it. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. 5.3 incoming means 6.3 when it impacts, when it impacts here. And then a flow around and outside over to the east. Now, wait a second. We already had a near 7 this past week down here. So near 7 striking at Panama, it was 6.7. And now a new push coming in. Have you noticed anything? Over on the east side of the Caribbean, notice the number of quakes, guys. Do you notice? It's, it's next to nothing. Again, we could count these on two hands. There's been times where there's thousands of earthquakes here at Puerto Rico in the northeast portion of the Caribbean. So what's up? Well, something happened over the past day since the big quake. All the buoys went into event mode around the United States, including the East Coast, going down into the Caribbean. I don't know if they're still going to show, but I do want to just jump over and quick, quickly look and see if they're still showing. Yeah, they are, actually. Okay. These are showing from this morning. They'll blink for 24 hours. <coughs> Luke. Luke. There is another. Oh my God. So what happens when you talk all night for hours and then get a few hours sleep 
and then come back and talk for more hours. Oh, and it is when you have a baritone voice and you're next smoker. All right. So over here around the Pacific, where all these are blinking, this is from last night, and it'll stay blinking for 24 hours. And over here on the East Coast, look at it. I mean, it's obvious. We're on the Northeast and Southeast portion of the plates. Let's go back to the USGS map one more time. Northeast portion of the plate, Southeast portion of the plate. Now, the USGS doesn't have anything marked out here, but they should. They've got the plate boundary out at the edge of Laurentia at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, but they need to have some kind of dotted line or something that goes down here along the coast that signifies the edge of the accretionary belt and the coastal plain. Because that's the way the earthquakes go. I don't care if it conflicts with anything that you learned in the past or whatever. It's the way the earthquakes go. You don't like it? I don't know what to tell you. I can't change it. It's the way the earthquakes are flowing. They're going across the plate, going around the plate. Not just U.S. Every plate is doing the same thing. The seismic energy, this wave that I'm talking about that I showed you in the tank, this wave will take a path of least resistance. It'll go around something. It'll try to go through it. And it, and it will. It, it will go through it. But it, it, while it's going through it, it's going to go around whatever hard contours of the plate exist. Path of least resistance. It's why we're getting earthquakes that go around the edge of the craton as opposed to directly right through it across in a straight line. So coming out of Utah, you would think it might, you know, in a straight line, it would just go across the U.S. Straight across, like a wave. But instead, it's being deflected around the edge of the craton, and we get a bunch of earthquakes that go around the edge of the craton, down through Texas, back up the East Coast. Same thing happens in Europe, only it's the opposite direction. It's coming from the Mideast. The flow, the wave. And it goes around Europe, again, going around Romania, going around Eastern Europe and Poland. And then it recombines and ends up back out here. So equilibrium is trying to be reached by the planet. It's being pushed up over here, and it's spreading all directions. It's going this way over to Europe into the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's going this way up around in the United States and back down and across the U.S. and back out to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's going from this way across over to South America and going around. This way to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. It's also going down and around to the south over to the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So that means the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is the destination point. That's why all the X's are there for this wave that starts over here on the opposite side of the planet. The antipode starts on here and goes across over to the opposite side. What happens when it reaches the X's, many people ask? It goes back into the planet, recycled, comes back out on the antipode where the X's are very close to it. And we see new deep earthquakes start the cycle over again or carried on like a feedback loop. And it gets to a point where there's a big break when the feedback loop is going back through the planet and comes back out the other side. Speaking of coming back out the other side, we do have to talk about this. Somewhat rare, but it does happen. Antipode earthquakes. An antipode is just the opposite side of something. So we go to the opposite side of the planet down here. Now we can turn off all the other quakes and I can turn off even the earth and we can turn on a grid so we can see this a little bit better now the antipode on the opposite side of the planet do you see that so I'm just gonna tell you right now uh, maybe maybe you aren't getting that okay here we are looking down on the quake and we can go through the opposite side of the planet and see where the antipode is. We can also look it up on an antipode's map. But I'm already going to tell you, the opposite side of the planet, pretty much right down here. Take a look at it. Again, that's a perfect match. We are south of South Africa. So getting back over to it, I'm going to turn the Earth back on now. See? So somewhere down here between our two X's and south of South Africa, being the antipode or the opposite side from where this has happened. According to several research papers that we've posted over many years time, and the study of thousands of earthquakes by the professionals now, this is the professionals, antipode earthquakes happen within three days of a large earthquake 6.0 and greater on over a 75% basis. So 75, three, three out of four times when a big earthquake strikes 6.0 plus, there's some activity about the same size on the antipode on the opposite side of the planet. That, I was shocked to see those studies come out. But yeah, man, you guys go check it out if you don't believe me. I'm from Missouri, which is the show me state. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you. 
Again, it's not about belief. This is science, guys. There should be no belief involved. That's why I encourage everybody to kind of keep their beliefs to themselves when they're in my chat rooms and stuff because I don't want to mix in belief with something you can prove and see and redo yourself on a regular basis and teach people. It's like meteorology. You wouldn't want to have to believe your weatherman, do you? I don't believe mine. I don't know if you don't believe yours. Again, it's not about belief. It's the proof is in the pudding. If you can't come through on forecasting, then there it is. You don't believe the person that's doing the forecasting. Now, the forecast was for a big earthquake to strike here this week. And the forecast last week was for a return to 8.0. You combine the two, and there's our big earthquake, 8.0, right next to where we issued the warning for this week. So this week, I'm issuing a warning next to Vancouver, Haida Gwaii, and Japan. And then next thing you know, the 8.0 from last week that everybody's just, you know, ripped me apart. That's something else, too. If I get it wrong, oh, man, if, I, if, I, if I'm wrong even by a couple days, everybody wants to give me a hard time. But, again, if I get it right, are those same people kind of come back and say, hey, good job? No, no, it's a one-way street if you only are wrong. Well, there it is. The first eight in three years hit within a week of what we're looking for. And I based it only on the deep earthquakes. Deep earthquakes, the solar, solar causes the deep quakes. That's why we're looking for a shallower, larger quake. That's why we're looking for eight to return this past week. And it was pretty obvious we were getting ready to return to eights because of the flurry of sixes and upper sixes, sevens, that they downgraded to 6.7. I'm going to give a word of advice to everybody who pays attention to the numbers from the professionals. Over the past couple weeks, they did some downgrades to try and hide the increase that was taking place. And they reduced several 7.0 earthquakes down to 6.9, then down to 6.7, so that the general public wouldn't become alarmed by multiple 7s striking in the same week. That was the buildup to this. So when they do that, and they do that regularly, that is padding the numbers and hiding the large earthquake increase, it's dangerous and it's unscientific. It's what happens when people who are more worried about feelings than science get involved with geophysics, and that's exactly who we're dealing with in these kind of people in the professional world. It's also why I'm doing so well online, because everybody can smell BS 10 miles away now, and it's pretty easy in the online world to prove yourself right or wrong. So we're doing well because, again, when the people see that there's a downgrade that goes on, in the week leading up to downgrades, multiple sevens are striking. They take them down to 6.7 to pad the numbers to keep it low. And then it's responded with an 8 the next week. Pretty, pretty obvious that what they were doing leading up to this is a little shady. And again, that's why I'm doing so well online, man. You want to add in a little shade factor to have to bust the government with? Or not the government. They're not the government. They're just funded by the government. It's USGS, man. So you find some shade going on there. And uh, you can prove it? Oh, man. Yeah, you, you, just, you guys are guaranteeing my online survival for the next 20 to 50 years. On that note, I'm going to encourage you guys all to not be scared. You need to be prepared. Look at, the, look at the path of the quakes. This took years to figure out. But look at it. Now that you understand there's a path of quakes, it kind of takes the mystery away, doesn't it? All the fear that they've created with all these years of telling you earthquakes were random and you had to watch all the time. And No, you watch along the edge of the Craton and you watch as pushes come in. You can watch as the push comes across the Pacific and it's not that big of a shock. It's kind of like the weather. Are you shocked to find out about tropical storms and hurricanes that form? I mean, are you completely caught off guard? Oh my God, a hurricane has formed. No, you're able to see it. You're able to watch it come across the entire Atlantic on its way here from dust storms off the Sahara. The same thing can be said for seismic. We can watch it come our way over the course of days and weeks at the most. Days, most likely. Sometimes a couple weeks, 14 days. Most of the time, within seven. Most of the time, even within that seven. So, three to four days. It's not even that long of a week time, uh, time frame sometimes. So don't be scared. Be prepared. Use the arrows to watch which way it's flowing. And when you see a big disturbance like this, think of it like a big storm dropping a lot of rain on a river. And the red arrows are where the river flows. And if you see that the 
You live along where the arrows are? I do. I have to pay attention. I did issue a warning. I never issue warnings for the New Madrid Seismic Zone. Hardly ever. Sometimes a little swarm warnings or something. But I'm warning for four now to come into my neck of the woods. I could even feel my first earthquake if it strikes close enough to St. Louis. I'm warning St. Louis down in New Madrid. 200 mile strike. Okay. That's just, again, a couple examples. We, we've got, again, big earthquake activity going on, which means I'm going to be doing multiple updates as things progress. This wave, hold on, one more thing I want to show you before you go and before I go. This wave, as it spreads, think of these, each one, like an earthquake. So a four and a four and a four and a four, or a five and a five and a five and a five. But the pushes that are coming in can be greater, like the eight up in Alaska. So we have a push that's coming in from the north that's huge, and we're currently dealing with threes and a few fours across the plate. What do you think that big push is going to do as it arrives? It's going to pump up the threes and fours. So everywhere we have threes, we're going to have fours. Everywhere we have fours, we're going to have fives. Everywhere we have fives, we're going to have sixes. Uh, there's a few earthquakes that are missing in there. We're looking for a six to come into California. Hence the warning. Hope you understand. If you want to know how to forecast an earthquake and you really want to go into it, I've already made a video titled How to Forecast an Earthquake by Dutch Sense in July of 2018. Or 2019. No, it was 2018. So it's almost three or four years old at this point. But you can go check it out. I should probably make another one, a shorter one. Yeah, I could probably condense it down to 30 minutes of explanation on how to forecast an earthquake. You can learn pretty quick. It's the halfway point between the current sets of quakes and standing waves. The deep earthquakes are what we look for for the main player on the whole cause. And then the sun. The sun is the cause of the deep quakes. So, well, there's also some man-made things that can cause deep quakes. <coughs> Sir, are you concerned? <coughs> A heart, too, but, you know, CERN, definitely. Uh, you know, anyway, there are man-made facilities that can have an earthquake effect, deep earthquake effect that causes deep earthquakes around the planet, CERN being one of them. But that's a whole different story. So man-made secondary to the sun. Sun's way more powerful and pumping in energy whenever there's a solar event coming towards Earth. That then increases the deep quakes. That then causes shallow or larger quakes. You need to have an earthquake plan, too. And I'm not going to harp on you. I'm just telling you. You need to know what to do when an earthquake strikes. Take shelter underneath a table or a desk. If you don't have a table or desk, get one. Goodwill, even. You go to Goodwill. Get the big, heavy wood furniture. Get underneath. Now, that's not going to protect you from a collapsing structure, of course. So, if your structure is starting to collapse, you're going to have to have an evacuation plan. You're going to need to go outside, most likely, if a structure is collapsing. So, you would need to know where to go ahead of time. You're not buying natural gas lines or collapsing sewers or water main breaks or power lines that are falling or things that fall off buildings when you're outside. Trees even can fall and some, and brick walls even can fall over. So I'm just going to tell you, you need to know where you need to go ahead of time so you're not trying to figure out during an earthquake where to go. And that's if your structure is compromised. Otherwise, I would stay inside. I wouldn't be going outside at all until long after the quake. And the emergency supplies, people are all different. You're going to have different needs, but food and water, that's basic. Change of clothes and set of shoes, that's basic. First aid and sanitation. That's basic. Stuff we all need. First aid, sanitation. You've already got sanitation hopefully cornered after this past year. Food and water, you should have a supply. Again, after this past year, you should have learned your lesson about having supplies. So food and water, I'm just talking about a couple days worth that you would put into a backpack. So maybe one gallon of water. Seven pounds, it's pretty heavy. Well, you know, seven pounds a gallon basically. So water is going to be heavy, but the food's prepackaged. You know, the granola bars and fruit roll-ups, high energy, but something you can carry around, even watertight packaging might even come in handy. Extra IDs, extra keys, extra sets of this and that, that'll be up to you. Your extra stuff can take up space, but I would probably have your documents that you need to get a new ID, those kind of things, your birth certificate or copies of it. I would have that ready to go. Maybe even scanned copies. I don't know what the state will allow now for scanned versus physical, but you guys, I hope you're doing well. 
I am recovering from staying up all night. I felt like a young man this morning. And then all of a sudden, the coffee kicked in and I got a sour stomach and I felt like an old man again. I am an old man. I'm 45. Gonna be 46 in September. I got a couple grays coming in. Somebody asked, have you seen Dutch since? They, they obviously don't know what I look like. I prefer you to imagine. It's always a letdown to find out what your, your host looks like. But if you wanted to look me up, you could. I guarantee you I'm not like what you expected. Or maybe I am. In which case, we need to hang out. <laughs> okay. Three, no, no, no. I don't want to hang out with the general public. What am I saying? It is 3.40 p.m. Central Time on the 29th of July, 2021. I'm going to save this and we will premiere it back over on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, hello, listen. Last night, I had to deal with person after person after person correcting me on the time. They're like, Dutch, it's not 3.40 p.m. It's 4.40 p.m. And I'm like, guys, this is not live. This is recorded and premiered back on YouTube like the premiere of a movie. And if you want to capture it live, like watching the live news, you have to come over to Twitch and watch live. So I record these live in front of a studio audience. That's everybody that's scrolling by in the lower left-hand corner right there. They're live in the Twitch chat. Several hundred people are in there. And then I record it and I go upload it to YouTube. When I upload it to YouTube, it takes... I don't know. I'm, I'm using a fiber connection, but we're talking gigs of upload. Uh, an HD one hour long broadcast. So I upload it. It takes about 15 to 20 minutes to upload. But then, or not even, sometimes 10 minutes. YouTube has to process that hour long video. So it takes, eh, sometimes it they process it in 30 minutes. They'll process an hour long video in 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Other times it takes an hour for them to process. It just depends on the load that's on the YouTube system when I upload a video. So it, I upload it, takes 15, 20 minutes, whatever. Then it takes another 15 to 20 to process. Once it's processed, then it displays to you guys as a premiere. And I'm in there in chat with you, watching my premiere back with you and answering questions or dealing with trolls or whatever. And so you're not watching something live. It's a function called Premiere. It's been on YouTube for years and everybody uses it for some reason on my channel. I, I don't know why people don't understand or uh, have never seen it. I, I, I It's all over YouTube. Everybody uses it. But yet when I'm on, it's like I'm dealing with this for, for first time and I have to explain it to everybody over and over again. So when I'm telling you the time is 3.40 p.m., it is. It is 3.40 p.m. right now here in St. Louis. I record it, and you'll probably be seeing it in about an hour to hour and a half. <laughs> Gotta explain that, because last night, go read the chat last night. Oh my god. Oh. All right. Chat on YouTube. The jungle. Welcome to the jungle, baby. We're out of here. Peace out. Much love. I'll be back if anything else significant goes down, and as the earthquakes strike the areas where I've warned, I'll be doing updates on those.